Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. Today we are going to look at ping and some of the ping options uh, from various types of operating systems. I'm starting with Cisco. So here's a good old Cisco device, it's a router. And if I was to type ping, and I'll just uh, ping something here. Ping, like that. See, off it goes. For the people who uh, know a little bit about Cisco and how your accounts are set up on the device, if I was to just type ping by itself, that's it. It says incomplete command. Even if I knew the actual syntax, I could not do some of the advanced stuff with ping. So in this case, on this device, I have to go to enable mode. And when I'm in, I can just type ping. And this time it asks me what protocol IP enter. Target address, I'll type in good old 88888. How many do you want to send? 11. The size you want to send? 999. So it's important to make sure the size represents the size of packets for your applications. Off we go to the races, I just hit enter a bunch of times, and you are done. So that's Cisco. So a lot of um, network equipment, some servers have the same type of thing. You have to make sure you have the right administrative privilege to do the proper command. Now let's bounce over to Microsoft, just one second here. So Microsoft, I just type ping, I see all the options. Again, I'm just going to ping something. I'm just ping good old 88888. Off we go to the races. Now, with Microsoft, we've got some additional options in the write-up, the little written piece. You'll see that I've actually talked about when I like to use these and what options work best for me. Uh, so that's all in there. Now, the thing I want to concentrate on right now, just to show you something, if I was to do dash L for length and I type 999, well, you can see the payload is 999. The entire packet, though, is greater than 999. So this is inside of the actual ping packet, the ICMP packet. So it's important for you to keep that in mind because sometimes you want to test for fragmentation, you want to test for the MTU, that sort of thing. So if I type ping again, you'll see there's a dash F, do not, do not fragment. So if I wanted to send that same ping and I would do a dash F, now it's sending the pings but it's telling everything along the way, do not chop this up. So if there was a router along the way that didn't like 999 and had to be smaller, then it would chop up the packet for me. And that's a little trick that, again, I talk about in the article that accompanies this video. The other tool I like to use is good old HRPing. So that's from CFOS, and the URL is here at the top, and it'll be in the article as well. Uh, one thing this does, which I really like, is it allows me to do something called a ping sweep, right? So when you look up here, there's a dash L and dash capital L, uppercase L. So I'm, I'm going to just paste my command in here enter. So what it's doing now, it says, hey, I'm going to ping something, and I want a thousand bytes of payload, and I want the maximum to be 1300, so the range is a thousand to 1300, and the step is 50, so I'm going to go up 50 bytes at a time. Well, you can see the bytes isn't quite that size, right? Because again, we have this whole payload math to do. Now, I'm going to change that lowercase l to an uppercase l, and this is a really interesting thing to pay attention to, and now you see the bytes are exactly what I wanted them to be. So there's this lowercase uppercase l thing with HR ping and some ping utilities. Microsoft does not have that option. It only allows you to do one thing. And that allows me to control the size a little bit more accurately when I want to do that fragmentation MTU kind of thing, right? So the only thing to keep in mind is when you do the math, I started at 1,000, and my range said 1300, but I finished at 1150 because of the number of pings that I sent. I didn't do the math in my head correctly. So if I was to just change this, dash n for number of pings, and I don't know, I'll add 11 for example, enter. Now you'll see that it's going to keep going up, 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 up until it hits that maximum. And when it does, it just goes back to the beginning, and you can see it kind of bumps it up a bit, you see? So it went 1000, 1300, and then went back to 1000, and then it kept going. So you should calculate the proper size. Obviously, 11 was too much in my case. Or if I did want it to go repetitively, I should do the math accordingly as well. So that's HR ping. And again, in the article, I mentioned some other things I like to do with HR ping as well. The big one is output reporting. So with Microsoft, what do you do if you ping something? The only way to really report on this is to do a greater than or redirect or pipe. Everybody calls it something different. And I'll call it test results dot text, for example, enter. So what that does now is it outputs all the screen output to the file. So now if I was to just open test results dot text, you would see everything that normally came up on your screen. So that's the way we get around that with Microsoft. Well, with other ping utilities, like good old HR ping, let me get back there, it actually has output options here. 
so it actually has reporting if you want to call it that which makes it incredibly important the last thing is ping is ICMP and this allows me to do a dash U with a port number and that's a UDP check right so for the people familiar TCP has a three-way handshake UDP has no such thing so this is not a sin sin act sort of thing this is a UDP port check which is rel relatively unique because Microsoft does not allow me to check UDP or TCP if you want to check TCP well you can't use HR ping so this is the last one I'm showing you it's good old cry ping right from crier now this allows me to do a few things I can actually check the status of the server or I can check port numbers so I'm gonna check the port number of this guy enter and you can see it running off and it's checking the port number and then just just for a little curiosity I'm gonna change this from dash P to dash H TTP enter and you when you see this it's gonna fail I know it's a web server I know it's up but it's not it says it's failed to connect so you might think there's a problem with the server and that's because if you capture the package you'll notice it sends something called a head command and that head command is not accepted by my server it says I don't know what that is so this starts to say this now you should always make sure you understand when something doesn't work why it's not working and when it works how it works so back to how it works port 80 I'm gonna to go to my trace here I got Wireshark running and you can actually see what this little guy is doing let me just drag this down a little bit here it's actually sending a sin sin ack sin sin ack and it records this TCP response time and again some application performance monitoring systems will have different terms for this they'll call it a TCP connect a TCP setup TCP sin ack connect time that sort of thing it all means the same thing and this is three milliseconds for example so instead of having to go through a trace file and find every single SYNAC and look at that number or set up a display filter or write a Lua script in Wireshark this the, this utility good old cryping is going through and measuring that for you so you've got the time right um, the other thing that HRPing and cryping does is it can actually test quality of service as well which again helps people test that sort of thing in their environment so if you like that kind of stuff please check the article out I'll have a whole sort of uh, list of other things in there and hope you enjoyed the video have a good day bye for now